Good day, dear listeners. Steve Preda here, the Management Blueprint Podcast. And today's special guest is Mark Reclau, the founder and managing director of Maclau Publishing. Mark is the best-selling author of 11 books that have been translated to 15 languages and have sold over 600,000 copies worldwide. He is an author entrepreneur, if ever there was one, uh, who actually makes his living by writing self-help books. And he lives in the sun in Malta. Uh, Mark, uh, welcome to the show. Hi, Steve. Thanks for having me. Well, uh, I'm very pumped to have you because you're kind of a very special type of entrepreneur, uh, an artist who makes a living uh, from their art, which I think is super cool. So I'd like us to dig into that and and to see whether the audience members can emulate any of the stuff that you are doing. So so let's start with your your background and your journey. How did you become an author entrepreneur? How does one do that? I mean, so many people would like to be able to do that. How how does it actually happen in real life? How does it happen in real life? That's about how I am. I'm asking myself that many times. It it happens like everything, step by step. So I'm. Going back a little bit in my history, so all my education or something was normal education. I have a business administration. I studied business, business administration for five years, which I didn't really like, but everybody studied it. And I worked in a job for 10 years that I didn't like. And then after 11 years, I was fired from that job. That was in 2013. And I had done a coaching training before. And I, was, I read self-help books personal development all my life since I'm 16. So, and you know, sometimes in coaching, we even get taught, we say, you know, reframe. Everything happens for a reason. And then when you, and one of the reframes is being jobless or having the opportunity to think, what do I really want in life? So I said, okay, I'm, I'm breaching that to my clients because I already had some clients. So maybe I should apply it on myself. And then the first idea as an entrepreneur, was building a coaching practice, life coaching business, coaches and go take it from there. I had two years because I got became I got jobless money for two years and I have some I had some money um, saved so I knew I have like two years to build something. Usually they say two years is enough. It took a little longer, but then I said and I I thought I want to be a, a coach and have the coaching practice, but then I also thought you know a book. It's fantastic to differentiate you from other coaches, from other. So after half a year, so the book was like, my first book was like in my head growing. I just had to bring it to paper. So after half a year, I said, okay, let's write it. It's the best time ever. I'm jobless. I have all the time in the world. So I lost my number one excuse. Oh, I would love to do it, but I don't have time. I didn't have that excuse anymore. And I said, okay, money is coming in because the jobless money was coming in and the savings were still up. (laughs) So I said, okay, do it now, right? And then I wrote the book because it was something I always wanted to write. 30 Days is my first book. And it is because I discovered that also in the coaching training that there are some exercises in personal development that if you really do them, they work. Only nobody does them, right? So in the time that I was jobless, I also didn't have an excuse to not try those exercises, like writing down the goals or being grateful, writing down three things you're grateful for every day and all this, these things are reading an hour every day in a new book, right? So I did it, I wrote my book, I published my book and as always, nothing happened. So for the first half year, nothing happened and I was like, "Uh oh, mm, okay, let's see. But I st- kept on studying, kept on persisting and then after half a year, I, I got on a, uh, on a, um, how do you say it? A promotion on Amazon. And then um, this took off, my book took off. So I got 40,000 downloads and those were free, but the whole Amazon system is, was set up then that you, once the book was paid again, I was up all high in the Amazon charts, like with Tim Ferriss and, and all these, my idols actually. And then suddenly I started selling books. So that was the first time I could live for my books because I had small spendings 
and I was making money. And then it happened what always happens or not shouldn't happen, but to me it happens. You get relaxed, you know, everybody tells you how to become successful, but very few people tell you, <laughs> once you are there, be careful. How do It's, you stay successful? How do you stay there? Yeah, and exactly to me it happened. Uh, I got relaxed. I started lowering my guard. And then after a while, after a couple of years, the sales weren't going so well anymore. Uh -huh. And even if I was still thinking I'm a great best-selling author who's making tons of money, when I looked at my numbers, I got really, I mean, nervous because numbers not, don't lie. And suddenly I noticed that I wasn't, um, that I wasn't earning a lot of money, that I was actually losing a thousand dollars a month. Wow. And that, that was the second time that was in 2018 then when I was once again in the roller coaster of the entrepreneur and say, oh, now something has to happen. And it better happens fast. I make it happen because if not, I have, I'm going to have to look for a job. And uh, I was always, you know, you, you mentioned it. I'm making most of my money with book royalties, which is something that doesn't normally happen. Normally you have a book and then you make the money with the consulting and the speaking. Yeah. It didn't work for me. I tried it, but it didn't work for me so well. And then my, my girlfriend, she's a LinkedIn consultant. And she asked me the question. It, it would also be the typical coach question. But she asked me because she was running my LinkedIn and for the post. And she said, Mark, every post needs a reason. So what do you want to do? Do you want to get coaching clients? Do you want to, to get um, conferences? Do you want, what do you want? And I was blocked by this. So it took me, she had to ask me many times and maybe after four to six weeks, I said, okay, look, I'm going to tell you now. I want to, in my dream, if you ask me, I would like to have all my, my income by book royalties. I don't want to do a lot of coaching because it's, it's pretty exhausting. I don't like the conference. I mean, once I'm in the conference, it's fantastic, but I'm also very nervous before going on stage. So, and then, If I can, if I can get around that feeling, that's even better. So I said, I want to make it all with, with book royalties. And I didn't make click in my head. So I said, okay, now it's, I, I communicated it. It's obviously a wish. So how do I do it? And then I did what probably we all do or we should do. I looked for people who were living the life that I wanted to live. And it was writers, but they were fiction writers. So right. they write novels. Yeah, they wrote novels and, and thrillers and everything. But it's okay because they had, and now we come to the system. They had a system. They had a blueprint. And if oh. it's a good blueprint, I can, I can adapt it for me. And it's exactly what I did. So I followed one British thriller writer, which I knew. He made tons of money with his books. I said, okay, what is he doing? And I, I studied two more and they were, I noticed they're all doing the same thing. They have many books, not only one book or two books. They have like 30 books. Mm -hmm. uh, they do a lot of free promotions because normally an author thinks, oh, no, I can't give my book away for free because, yeah, it was such a lot of work. And, but those guys, they have the formula studied. So they know exactly the value of each of their readers. So they know, for example, every reader they have buys three or five books from them statistically. Mm -hmm. So they know they will make with every reader, let's say $25. So then if you give away 5,000 books for free, when you come with this perspective, you don't feel like you are, you are losing money. It's the cost of acquisition gaining... of, of the lifetime value of the customer. Yeah, exactly. It's what it's when you go in the supermarket and they give you a sausage for free, right? Yeah. So yeah. And, <laughs> and then you change the mindset and then suddenly it's like, okay, that's 5,000 new readers. And statistically, well, maybe every third of them will buy yeah. three, more, three or more books from me. That they did. And then they spent a lot of, of money in um, advertising on Amazon, for example. Mm -hmm. And that's also something, you know, there are always rumors in the business. And Sout's very good. You know, it's like, oh, he's making $20,000 a month. He's making $25,000 a month. But then when you look behind the curtain, well, he's also, he's also spending $10,000. Yes. to make the 12, 25,000, but it's still, it's 15,000 net 
So that's a CEO salary. I said, hey, if I can ever get there, I am happy with it. So I started really um, doing it. I started applying it. I noticed I have to write my more books because at that time I might, I might have had four books or so. Mm -hmm. So in 2018, I wrote three books and then I translated it into Spanish. So I had six books. And, oh. and since then I write like a couple of books per year. And now I have like 44 products on Amazon. So that's how you do as a writer, as a, and it's nice that you consider me an artist. I think I'm not an artist, but I, I do entertainment. I write books that entertain you and hopefully help you. And it's all written on my experience. So I'm practically, I'm, I'm experiencing stuff about productivity or self-esteem or minimalism. And then I write it down to say, okay, look, if you want to give it a try, it worked for me. Maybe it will work for you too. And yes. Yeah. So, yeah. and that's the story, how I build up my business. Yeah. So it's interesting that you don't consider yourself an artist necessarily. Um, I think a lot of the artists are like that. Uh, there is a, a, a song uh, from Van Morrison that I really like when he, I think the title is, uh, I'm a songwriter is the title. And then he says, you know, I can write it when I'm down. I can write uh, whenever, you know, whatever happens, I can churn it out because I'm a professional. I can do this in my yeah. sleep. And then the checks is in the mail. And this is how I make a living. And I really like that because it, it shines a light on the, the life of the professional. So to the Absolutely. outside world, it looks like an art and, you know, you look at the basketball players, LeBron James, I mean, it's amazing what he does, but he's a professional. He just mm -hmm. has his profession down at a very high level and he's fully prepared and he practiced a million times so that That's he doesn't it. miss the shots and he is pumped iron and he can basically power through to the, to the basket. And that's that's the life of an artist, you know. They, exactly. they go through this evolution. So I do I do think it's it's uh, you are an artist, but you're also professional. Yeah. So so what does it uh, take to live the creative life? I mean, you are living the creative life that is a dream for most of us, most of the rest of us. Um, and and what are any possible downsides to having the creative life? If oh, um, I have to tell you, um, I don't see any down side for me personally the downside is always i have to always mm, be careful to not lower my guard uh, last year also i had two incredible sales months with sums that nobody in my family ever has had before and then i also noticed i was getting again relaxed not on top of my ads so because it's really you know there's also lots of people say oh passive income and everything is one one time set and it goes and it's not I'm doing my Amazon ads I'm doing them every day one or two hours and it and then last year I didn't do it and I'm still paying for it because the profitability crashed and everything so it crashes quite easy you know it doesn't take long to to crash it's like it's like when you gain weight right you gain weight it, it doesn't take long but to to lose it again that takes half a year or more and with my profitability it was like that it crashed within a month or two and and then I needed to work hard to get it back. So that's for me the only downside. Everything else is like fantastic. So I'm, and I'm also a lot, I'm thinking a lot to say, what will I do when I am retired? And for me personally, it's a fantastic question because I would say, I, say, I probably would do everything the same. You know, why, why should I stop writing two books a year? And on the other hand, when you turn it around, I'm already pretty living the life of a retired person because well i have my own schedule i work a lot i work six to eight hours a day but maybe i start at six and then at 12 i'm finished and and wander around on malta or i remember i i lived for a, on a boat for a couple of years in barcelona and it was fun because i met their bank directors it ceos and everything and they were all telling me that once they retired they, they want to live work. like me, yeah. <laughs> I said, okay. Then I did something right. Then I did something right, yeah. So that's so, why they came to you to give them advice and not to another CEO, right? Yeah. <laughs> no. So it's so no downside, only discipline, maybe. So you have to be very 
aware also i think self aware and and also grateful you know so i'm i'm very grateful that i can live a life like that because once you're not grateful anymore it's not special anymore and this is something those are them let's say the values i hold myself to to be grateful that i can have a life like this to stay disciplined to not relax although it will always happen but then get on track when i know it i can react to it or also so not lie to myself because that happened to me you know when we look at the num before as i told you i thought i was making a lot of money but when i looked at the numbers suddenly it looked and so to hold myself accountable also and be honest to myself so those are the things i have to have but the lifestyle is fantastic and and um, for me it's a little bit sad that we are in the pandemic that's very selfish to say but the thing is i want to see how would this life go when we're not in a pandemic because when free travel again and everything so because when i became successful two months after the pandemic hit so <laughs> so my dream life is still traveling more but i won't complain and i'm glad that thanks to also to this life yeah i i'm pretty independent so mark um it really struck a chord with me when you said that the way you became uh, an uh, a writer who can make make a living out of writing was you actually emulated other writers who were doing that and you studied their system and you figured out you just have to follow their blueprint mm -hmm. that was your 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 uh, wording and I, I love that I mean obviously blueprint is one of my favorite words yeah but uh, so so tell me a little bit about this process of um, a lot of people have role models and say wow I'd like to live like this successful person. So how does one go about discovering that that system and then applying it? Is there my, is there method to it? How yeah, did you in, my, it? in my case, I just I, I I research them. So of course you hear them. You know everybody online is super successful and selling thousands of books, and then you have to go and and research it. And you, I research them. Are they really mm, selling so many books as they are saying? And then I, you can find that out with the Amazon bestseller lists. And really like the, not only is that, are they number one in a category, but are they number, are they high in the whole, in the whole of Amazon? And then I bought the courses. I bought the courses of three guys because in the courses, they always give a little more. And, and then for me, it was enough. And then the rest was really me. When I synthesized out what it is, it's more books, more promotions and advertising. Then I concentrated on, on learning advertising and that was it. And it, I could see in advertising pretty quickly that it was so that I was making more money. And then I saw the relation quite quickly. So the more ads I made, the more money I was making it was. And, and then that's what I did for one and a half years, Steve. So for one and a half years, I was just doing ads and more ads and and that's something I saw it yesterday because it's interesting. Because now I can say, look, because usually when I'm an Indo you, I'm like, yeah, well, ads, I multiplied my sales by 20. Great. Sounds great, you know? And then everybody can think, oh, yeah, with ads in one month and two months, I can. And then I saw the live chart of my ads. And then I saw a line which was like this, where, and then it went like this. And you know when it went like this? After 16 months. I had forgotten that. So I was doubling, tripling my sales, but the big sales came after 16 months. Wow. So that's, and I'm, I'm sure you see that too in all the processes you do. So that's, I think the most important thing to stay with it. And it's a process and the process can be, and I really, I was baffled when I saw 16 months, I was like, what was, what was driving me mm -hmm. to keep doing this for, for 16 months and I'm not only talking to you to the three years before when I was not making that much money as a writer when I was even a struggling writer right so the, so all in all when I look back it was like five tough really tough years yes. and when I look back I said how how did I do it and sometimes when I post on LinkedIn or something I said I only say to the people like would you have had the patience mm -hmm. would you have to have the patience to see this this line that is going nearly parallel for 16 months and then it jumps 
but who has the, the patience to stay there 16 months? Or when I, as a writer, when I was not making so much money during four years, would you have stayed the fifth year and then it took off and it's fantastic. I'm sure you see it often and I see it really also everywhere. So the thing, and it's always stay with it. Do you have the patience? Do you have the persistence? And then we are again with the basketball players, uh, LeBron, he's play, probably training six hours since he's six years old or Michael Jordan who didn't make his high school team and then got up every morning at 6 a.m. to practice. So we see the result. When you study somebody, you see just the result. And that's what's happening to me now. Many people say, oh, Mark, what, wow, great. What, what do I have to do? I want to have the life like you. And I say, well, probably, I mean, I took five years, but probably in two years, you can do it. You have to write many books, maybe three a year, and you have to learn ads. And then maybe in two or three years, you can reach the level. And then they're not interested anymore. Yeah. It's too yeah, They just want the result. They don't yeah. want the work that it requires. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, they say that a lot of people want to be a best-selling author, but uh, not a lot of people want to write a best-selling book. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's also something I see. So everybody wants to be a, a best-selling author, but you can become one and you can sell many books if you do ads, but then they say, okay, but I want the book. I want to write a ghostwriter to write the book and somebody else to make my ads, but I become rich and famous. And that it doesn't work like this because nobody will write the book like you. Yes. Nobody, so it will always even there are great ghost writers and they can write, write a great book. But you, if you put your touch on it, it will be different. The reader notices it. And with the ads, it's the same. We all say, we who are making money with ads and money with books, we all say, look, nobody ever will make your ads like you because it's just, we know it. When I make a mistake with my money, it hurts. Yeah. I will never make the mistake again. It's but if somebody makes it, mistake with my money they don't care you know so it's the entrepreneurial energy is not in there when someone else does it and yeah that's always the thing that how do you transfer the entrepreneurial energy into other people so that they can get an equally good result and uh, i don't know it very rarely happens you need you need someone to keep infusing that energy yeah. and sometimes you can build a culture that uh, perpetuates that but it's, it, is, it is very rare. It's difficult, also they will never be like you, you know, so I don't have employees, so thank God, because, so I'm the only one I'm accountable to. I work with freelancers, but it's also not, they're doing my covers or whatever, so it's not the, the world of my company, right? But when you have 10, 10 employees, even the best will never be like you. They will be, might be just like you, but never like you, so we, yeah. and I, I am, have the luck, in quotes, that I decide. My business, as a, for some is a, it might be a net, it might be a disadvantage because I probably can't scale a lot. You know, I can only scale and how much money I give to ads and how much comes out, but I also don't need a million dollar company because- well, You I, can scale by writing a Harry Potter equivalent that has such a broad appeal that exactly. everyone will buy it. They say that if, if you, if you, uh, you know, if you make, a, a dollar on every customer and you have a billion customers then you can become a billionaire exactly so so, uh, so i want to switch gears here and, and and talk about a couple of concepts that that you came up in our pre-interview uh, one was minimalism mm -hmm. and and you said that you're passionate about minimalism you are writing a book about it right yeah uh, so what does minimalism mean and what are the benefits of minimalism I mean, uh, once again, I can only tell you about me because that's something, so the habits and everything I write to, they might work for everybody, but everybody might have different results. And for me, minimalism is fantastic because I always felt well with the less stuff I had. So I came to Barcelona 21, no, 18 years ago with one bag. It was fantastic. And then in my time in Barcelona, I accumulated a lot of things. And suddenly for my third move, I already needed a little bus and make three trips it's, to move yeah. the stuff, you know. Then I got divorced, so half of the stuff was gone. So there was something. <laughs> and then I moved from a house to a boat because I always wanted to live on a boat. And it was also like to, to get rid of more stuff because usually when you move, you get rid of stuff that you don't need, but it's always <laughs> there, right? 
So then I moved on the boat and I already had less stuff. And then my last move to Malta, I made with an airplane. So I said, okay, I will throw, but again, because I could send it all to Malta, but I don't want stuff. So I said, okay, I will be once again in the situation where I have to throw stuff out. And I moved at the end to Malta with one big suitcase and with one small suitcase. One small suitcase is still in my girlfriend's house, but so I know all my belongings are in two big suitcases. And to me, this gives a very good feeling. I went, I have also no, no property. I rent, I rent uh, furnished apartments. So that takes a lot of the stuff off. And then I come with my two suitcases. I go in there. I can live there one year, five years. And when it, the time is over, I take my two suitcases and, and leave again. So for me, what has it brought? Clarity probably is the most clarity. So there's not a lot of clutter because yes. even if you know, notice it or not, the more clutter, the less clarity. And then what I told you in the pre-interview was also what was for me mind boggling is because, and I do the Marie Kondo style uncluttering. So I start with clothes and then you go to books and videos. And then at the end, you come to the emotionally, you come to the stuff you are emotionally attached to like photos, gifts and stuff. <laughs> but also on the way of uncluttering, because you have made thousands of decisions you become very good in decision-making. Mm -hmm. And then in my case, that led to more because then it led into my business. And I had a, three collaborations, which really took a lot of energy from me because or there was always complaints or the money never came in time. Whenever they had to pay, there was one, another excuse, you know, the best excuse and I'm very, I'm very direct. So once a guy says, yeah, well, uh, my partner is now an, in South America and I don't have the bank number to make that. And I, I, I yelled at him. I said, look, if your partner is in South America, she's in, in South America with my money. So you better get it to me. So, and it was just too much. And then I, those three collaborations made 25% of my income. And I decided to let them all go in this, to say, okay, let's do it. Toxic relations out. And I said, uh oh, Mark, so, I was aware, I said, oh, you might lose 25% of revenue uh, this year, but well, you know, you have to, probably you have to save a little bit on other stuff. And then I just did the year. And at the end of the year, I made 10% more. Yeah, because you so lose a lot of energy. Uh, there's a lot of energy which is which goes into this toxic thing. Exactly. Release it and you can put it in the focus area, which is more valuable. Uh, that's where you're the best at. That's it. Yeah. And uh, it makes a huge difference. It also makes you feel better. Absolutely. I've been, I've been to this situation as well. And it's hard to let go of something, but then it's a liberating feeling. Oh, wow. It's incredible. Yeah. And it's also, you know, it's a, it's a process. And it's really the same thing is. So I started also, you know, tens, like ma making better payment conditions for me to say, 50% in advance and or now it's everything in advance because it's like, yeah, if you can do it, it's great. And if not, not a problem for me. I prefer not to do it than to run behind my money. For me, that has really left me like, it's one of the most disagreeable things. I just don't like it. Yeah. And, and it's fun because with other entrepreneurs, when I talk about it, they say, yeah, Mark, okay. For you, it's easy because you know, you have a lot of money and royalties coming in and everything. I said, no, no, but it was not that way. I had to, I did first, I had to show the courage to put this payment condition and then the money came. Because I think when you are having, you are communicating something to the universe or even subconsciously to your business partner and say, look, it's okay. I can, I can afford it. Uh, I'm yeah. that good that you have, if you want my services, you have to pay up front. Yeah. No apologies. Yeah. And for me, it's fantastic because it's like another thing that when you, I was reminded of it, when you say, when you talk about the liberation, about this free, because then there are no problems anymore. And sometimes I even so, because I also, I want to give good service. So now I'm doing a translation of a book and I told him, okay, give me 50% in advance because I know the other 50% will also motivate me to, to work faster and get a better delivery date. So I am that fair, you know, I said, I, because I don't want everything in advance and don't give anything back. No, no, you okay. get the service. And when, when it's like a translation, it's even, yeah, 50% is okay for me because that will push me to work yes. better and harder. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. So that's that's great. So another topic I wanted to bring up uh, before our time is up is is the idea of the success habits. So you talk uh, you talked about that last time as well. So how how does one acquire success habits and how do you know what they are and and how do you go about that? Yeah. That, so that came out when I studied I studied a lot of successful people, you know, and then I suddenly I noticed a pattern. They were all doing the same stuff, you know, they were like saying no a lot, for example, or getting up very early, most of them, or very grateful. So many of them practice gratitude. So I saw of all these successful people, a pattern of habits that they were doing. And then it's the same thing that you just start doing it, you know, and then with habits is a thing because the experts are, they are um, discussing, is it 21 days? 30 days, 66 days, 180 days, it doesn't matter. So I think they were agree on 66 days, but at the end, it doesn't matter because you're doing it until you have it and then you keep doing it. Yeah. It's not like I'm doing it for 30 days, then I have to have it and yes. then I thought, And I really notice, of course, I noticed it in, in myself, how these habits brought me to success. And you can find them in any book about habits or when you, even if you read biographies, of successful people, you will see the same things. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. and then you choose the ones. I always tell people because I wrote now lots of habit books and lots of habits in 30 days, there are 94 habits. So people say, oh, when do I have to do all the 94 habits? I said, no, you take the ones that come easiest for you. You start small because this will give you also confidence. And then you just go and I'm not doing the 94 habits all but I always do some of them you know I'm always having at least five or ten habits that I'm continuously doing then there are some habits that are just so easy peasy it's common sense like watch less tv or read an hour a day and you find time for it and and that's it and then the only thing that matters is and we come back to what I told you before then the only how is your persistence are you patient enough and to keep going at yeah. the end is it it's pers I think because many times people ask me what was the most important habit and I think it's not one but persistence is one of the top habits because you have to persist mm -hmm. believe in yourself is another one because if you don't believe in, in yourself nobody will believe in yourself then yeah. what I one of my favorite habits and I think it's the most impactful and the easiest is the practice of gratitude mm -hmm. so I write down three things every day that I'm grateful for for me it's more than three because when you practice it a while First, it might be difficult to find three. After two or three weeks, you will find 10. You know, and I, I'm for my mother, grateful for my girlfriend, grateful for to have a roof over myself, grateful for how life is going, grateful for my computer so I can. Con so, look, we have already four things, and then you have to feel also this gratitude. So, when I do this practice, I actually get nearly goosebumps because it makes me so happy and grateful for that. And if you do that for two, three weeks, things will change because you are reprogramming your mind that's scientifically proven because you put we say again, the focus your focus is on everything that you can be grateful for so that means you will see more of it all the time you be and scientifically proven benefits are you you become happier more optimistic you see more opportunities which for our entrepreneurs is always good because no we cannot take every opportunity but the more there are the better the chances the better that you, you take can find the good one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, success begets success, and if you program yourself that you already are successful because you have so many things to be grateful for, then that's gonna start the uh, yeah. the flywheel uh, flywheel going. So yeah. I, I totally agree with that. So listen, our, our time is coming to an end here, but um, um, so the listeners they would like to get that tease into uh, some of the stuff that you teach about your know, success habits. Minimalism is not out yet, but uh, but if they start reading other books, they're gonna get uh, the notice of that as well. So where should they start? You know, what is the book that you recommend for entrepreneur listener to start with? Oh, and I how think can it, they connect it, with you personally as well? So the book to start, I think, is Thirty Days. Thirty Days, because Thirty Days is a very gener generic book. It's like the habits. Uh, I think everybody will find something for it. And I, based on that book, then I, I did um, like 
spin-offs. That's how you say it. You do the spin-off, right? And you do then uh, you, I have one book about how to become a people magnet, which is more a book about how to treat with people. That would be a great book for salespeople, I think. <laughs> Although there will be nothing new for them. That's also something of my books is really, I don't know if you will find anything new because I don't think we have to reinvent the wheel. And my experience in the writing was really do the freaking exercises and your life will, will change because I think we all read a lot. And it's great to read, but when you start doing the exercises, that's when the life will change. And that's my focus. Uh, but so yeah, start with 30 days and then just move along. What I have one about productivity too. Uh, you, you will notice. And for me, where can people find me? Um, I'm lucky. There's only one Mark Recklow in the world. One Mark Recklow with a C. There's another one with a K, but Google has already buried him, the poor guy, under me. And yeah, in Google, you put my name, everything comes up. I'm not so on many social media anymore, so I'm on LinkedIn and Instagram, but I think I will also leave Instagram soon because I left Twitter and Facebook in January, and I'm happier than ever, and I have too much time now. So I left there because it's a time robber, and now I'm bored because I don't know how. <laughs> so I probably can write and read more books. But exactly. so. LinkedIn I am, and then email, I, I, am, I am, um, answer all my emails, mark at markreckloud.com. This is also my webpage. I have a web page which is markreckloud.com and another one which is Good Habits Academy. And then Amazon, I mean, my books are on Amazon. And when you put my name there, lots of stuff comes up. Okay, awesome. Well, Mark Recklau. Author, entrepreneur, the author of 11 books, 600,000 copies and counting. Uh, great to have come to your sh to the show. I uh, really enjoyed the conversation. And to our listeners, if you enjoyed this conversation, then please don't forget to go on Apple Podcast and uh, rate and review us so that we can get out to more, even more listeners. Uh, you can also please uh, follow us on YouTube, uh, whatever you subscribe. Um, and stay tuned because next week I'll have another exciting entrepreneur come on the show. So Mark, once again, thank you. Thank and you, Steve. Uh, I could have gone on for an hour, huh? but we, <laughs> we do, but we keep it short. Thank you very much. Huh? We do, we it do was a pleasure. All right. Thank you, Mark.